In this section, we'll study percentages and how percentages are applied in the real world. In this video, we'll uh, solve problems one, two, three, and four from the worksheet. Now let's start with some basic ideas about percent. Now suppose we need to write 45% as a fraction. 45% is equal to 45 per 100. So the word per translates to division in math. So 45 per 100 is the same as 45 divided by 100. So a percent can be co converted to a fraction, which is 45 over 100. So 45% is 45 over 100. Now we can just simplify the fraction and bring it to the lowest terms by canceling common factors. So 45% is the same as 9 over 20. So the word percent, if we break it into two parts, it, it is per cent. The word per translates to division, and the word cent is a short form for 100, and I'm guessing it comes from the word century. Now, in word problems, basically what we have to do is translate the sentences into math equations or math uh, sentences. So <clears throat> let's look at the first problem. So we're looking at this one. Three-fourths of a box containing 20 candies was eaten. So the word of in this context, where you have a fraction of the whole, which is 20 candies. The word of in this context, when it's in the form fraction of the whole, the word of translates to multiplication. So three-fourths of 20 is eaten is the same as saying three-fourths times 20 equals the number of candies eaten. So that's the number eaten. So we've converted all the uh, words into a math equation. All we have to do is simplify the numbers by canceling common factors. 4 goes 5 times into 20. Now, nothing else cancels because in the denominator we have 1s. So all we have to do is simplify it and it becomes 15. And of course, you can do all this using a calculator, but when the calculations are simple, then it's just easier to just do it by hand. Now, remember that a percent is nothing but a fraction. So in this case, we have 80% of the students, and the total number of students is 1,200. So it's the same as saying a fraction of the whole, which is 1,200. So the word of in this context just translates to multiplication. 80%, as we've seen before, is 80 over 100. Of translates to times the total, which is 1,200. So 80 over 100 times 1,200 is the total number of women in this college. So 80 over 100 times 1,200, which is the same as 1,200 over 1, if you want to write it as a fraction. So it's clear what sits in the numerator and what sits in the denominator. 100 goes 12 times into 1,200. So simplifying the numbers, we get 12 times 80, which is 960. So the total number of women in this college is 960. So now let's look at problem number one. The question says express the first number as a percent of the second number. So basically, we are looking at 12 million metric tons of beef produced in the U.S., that's one number. So amount of uh, beef produced in U.S. is 12 million metric tons. And the amount of beef produced worldwide is 65.1. <clears throat> so the fraction of the total production of beef 
is given by this fraction. So total production of beef in the U.S. 12 divided by the total production of beef worldwide, which is 65.1. So 12 over 65.1 is the ratio of beef production in U.S. to the beef, beef production in the entire world. So this is a fraction, that is, if we convert everything to whole numbers. However, if we want to change this to a percent, all we have to do is multiply by 100%. And just really quickly, what exactly is 100%? That is equal to 100 over 100, because it's 100 per, which is divided by 100, that's equal to 1. So when we multiply the fraction, which is given here, with 100%, so we see 100 and the percent symbol here, the 100% is really a 1. So we're not changing the number, we're just writing it in a different way. So when you use your calculator, this is exactly what we come up with. So U.S. produces 18% of the annual production worldwide. Now here, we start with a few definitions. When a quantity changes, it either increases or decreases. It starts off at a certain value that we call the reference value. So it starts at the reference value. It changes to a new value. So you can think of the reference value as the old value if you want to. So the old value is what you start with, and the new value is what you get after the value has changed. So when we talk about change, it could be change in temperature, change in weight, it could be a weight gain, it could be a weight loss. So there is always a sign attached to change. And how do we measure change? This is a measure of change. Absolute change is the new value minus the old value or the reference value. So the new value always comes first. You subtract the reference value or the old value from it. So that is the absolute change. Now, as you can imagine, this could be positive or negative depending on whether it's an increase or a decrease. So for a decrease, you'll have a negative change. And for an increase, you'll have a positive change. Now, another definition is relative change. So relative change is given by this formula. It is the measure of change that we call absolute change divided by the old value or the reference value. You always compare the change to the existing value or the reference value. Now, if you want to convert this fraction, this is really a fraction. If you want to convert this fraction into a percent, all you have to do is multiply by 100% and just remember that 100% is really equal to 1, so you're not changing anything. You're just going to write your answer as a percent. So the one thing you shouldn't forget is once you've done the calculations, the symbol percent is important. If you don't put that, then you've ch completely changed the value of the existing fraction. Now we look at the second problem. Uh, and as I always say, if you want to read the question carefully, you can pause the video so you get all the details. Uh, once you've read the question, you'll see that uh, the population of uh, Las Vegas is being compared. You can see that it increased from the reference value of 478,000 people to the new value which is 565,000 people. And now in Dallas, so we're looking at Dallas now. The population has changed from 1,189,000 to 1,000,000 in 2020. 
So as you can see, this is a decrease in population. Now, the first question says, which city has the greater absolute growth in population? So if we think about the absolute change, so if we figure out the absolute change, which is the new value minus the reference value. So the ending value, the final value minus the beginning value, that's what we do. The new value always comes first in the difference. So the absolute growth of Las Vegas, when you subtract the old value from the new value, we have 87,000 people. In Dallas, the absolute growth is the old value is subtracted from the new value. So therefore, we go 1,245,000 minus 1,189,000. So here, the difference is negative. That really should have been negative, 56,000. So clearly, uh, Las Vegas has the greater absolute change. But if we talk in terms of growth, definitely Las Vegas is the one which has grown in its population. Now, the second part of the question says, which city has the greater percentage growth in the population? So we use the formula for percentage change, which is absolute change divided by the reference value, which is the beginning value, times 100%. So when we do the calculations, we get 18.20%, which basically says that the percentage growth in population or increase in population is 18.20%. Now, when we look at percentage growth of Dallas, we do the exact same calculation. So that's the absolute change, the difference in the new value and the old value, divided by the reference value times 100%. So this, again, what we missed here is the negative sign, minus 4.71%. So Las Vegas clearly has the greater absolute growth and the percent growth in population. Here, problem three is just another example of the same type of problem that we did previously. So here it's about the number of music CDs shipped in the United States. And here it says it decreased by, so it's a decrease from 942 million in 2000 to 511 million in 2008. Now the question says, find the absolute change and the percent change in um, the number of music CDs shipped. So let's look at what's given to us. So in 2008, so that's a new value. It's 511 million. In 2000, we have 942 million. So it has changed from 942 million to 511 million. So that is a decrease. So our change is going to be negative. The absolute change is the new value minus the reference value. So the new value minus the old value. And clearly, when we do the subtraction, we see that the change is negative. Now, that is the absolute change. Now, if we have to calculate the percent change, we just use the formula for percent change, which is the absolute change divided by the old value or the reference value times 100%. <clears throat> so when we do the calculation, you can use your calculator, we get negative 45.8%. So the percentage change is negative 45.8%. It's negative because it is a decrease. Now problem four, we need to read the question carefully. 
The question says the median age at first marriage of US women, 25.9 years, is blank percent less than the median age at first marriage of US men. So we're comparing the median ages of first marriage of men and women. But here, so the first question we need to answer is, what percent of the men's median age is the women's median age? So we need to calculate that percent and that's what we're doing first. So median age of women over the median age of men times 100%. So we do the calculations by plugging in the numbers and we get 94.18%. So what exactly does this number give us? So the median ages of women and men are compared. So the 94.18% tells us exactly the first statement. The median age of women is 94.18% of the median age of men. So that is what we have from the calculations. So clearly the median age of women is less than the median age of men, but by how much is what we need to calculate. So if 100% is the median age of men, subtract the 94.18% to get 5.82%. What this means is uh, that the median age of women is 5.82% less than the median age of men. So that answers the, the question that is given and you can fill in the blank with the number 5.82%.